Mary Tyler Moore dazzled as a beloved figure in television for her immense talent and charisma on screen. Yet, her life was marked by the profound loss of all she held dear, including her parents, siblings, and child. From her battles with health and personal challenges, join us as we discover the depth of Mary Tyler Moore's life. Accompanied by rare photos of the star, Mary Tyler Moore was born on December 29, 1936 in Brooklyn, New York City. Her parents were Marjorie and George Tyler Moore. They were an Irish Catholic family living in Brooklyn's Flatbush neighborhood. Mary was the oldest of three kids, with a younger brother named John and a younger sister named Elizabeth. Unfortunately, Mary Tyler Moore's sister, Elizabeth, passed away at age 21 due to a mix of painkillers and alcohol. Her brother also had a tragic fate and died of kidney cancer when he was 47. At age 6, Mary was a victim of sexual abuse by a family friend she referred to as Mr. Archer. The effect of that ordeal deeply scarred young Mary, and when she spoke to her mother about it, she was met with disbelief and denial. When Mary turned 8, attending St. Ambrose School and later Immaculate Heart High School in the picturesque Lost Phyllis neighborhood. Her time in California grew her love for the world of entertainment. Mary Tyler Moore's early career in Hollywood started with a role as a dancing elf in a stove commercial for Hot Point appliances in the 1950s. She appeared in an outstanding 39 Hot Point commercials over five days, earning approximately $6,000. At age 18 in 1955, Moore married her next door neighbor, 28 year old cranberry juice salesman Richard Meeker. And within six weeks, she was pregnant with her only child, Richard Carlton Meeker Jr., while still working as happy. Hot Point ended her contract when it became too difficult to conceal her pregnancy with the elf costume. Meeker and Moore divorced in 1962. Undeterred, Mary continued to pursue her passion for showbiz. She anonymously modeled on the covers of record albums and even auditioned for a role as the elder daughter of Danny Thomas for his long-running TV show. However, she was rejected, with Thomas humorously remarking that her nose was too small. She broke into regular television roles when she portrayed a mysterious and glamorous telephone receptionist in Richard Diamond's Private Detective. Interestingly, while she provided the character's voice, her legs were the only visible part on camera, adding mystique to her character. Around the same time, Mary guest starred in various TV series like John Cassavetes' Johnny Staccato, the series premiere of The Tab Hunter Show in September 1960, and The Bachelor Father episode Bentley and the Big Board in 1960. In 1961, she expanded her presence with significant parts in movies and television series including Bourbon Street Beat and 77 Sunset Strip. However, all of this did not bring the recognition she needed to make her mark until 1961, when Moore was cast in The Dick Van Dyke Show by Carl Reiner. The weekly series was based on Reiner's life and career as a writer for Sid Caesar's television variety show, Your Show of Shows. Danny Thomas Company produced the show, and Thomas himself recommended her. Moore's energetic comic performances as Van Dyke's character's wife began at age 25 when she was 11 years Van Dyke's junior, making both the actress and her signature fitted Capri pants extremely popular. Mary's role is said to have changed how women were viewed in television because she played an intelligent, modern, and innovative woman, something not many television shows had at the time. In 1962, Moore met Grant Tinker, a CBS executive and later chairman of NBC. Their romance blossomed and they tied the knot creating a partnership beyond their personal lives. Together, they founded the highly successful MTM Enterprises, which played a pivotal role in shaping the television landscape during the 1970s and beyond. In 1970, Moore and husband, Grant Tinker, successfully pitched a sitcom centered on Moore to CBS. The Mary Tyler Moore Show significantly bridged aspects of the women's movement with mainstream culture. The show portrayed an amiable, independent woman named Mary Richards, whose primary focus was on her professional career rather than marriage and family. This representation for women at the time was groundbreaking. The series also marked a significant milestone for film and television producer James L. Brooks, as it became his first major hit. He would go on to work closely with Mary Tyler Moore and Grant Tinker's production company on various projects. The show enjoyed ratings in the top 20 for six years, but it slipped to number 39 in its seventh season. Producers considered canceling the series due to declining ratings, fearing it might tarnish the show's legacy if renewed for another season. Despite the drop in ratings, 
the 1977 season still managed to win its third consecutive Emmy Award for Outstanding Comedy. Over its seven-season run, the program collected an impressive 29 Emmy Awards, with Mary Tyler Moore herself winning three awards for Best Lead Actress in a Sitcom. In 1969, Moore was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and had to administer insulin on herself several times a day, and as if that wasn't enough, Mary Tyler Moore and Grant Tinker's relationship started going through a series of ups and downs, initially breaking up in 1973 but reconciling later that year. With both heavily involved in the television business, it caused a strain on their marriage. 1979, they announced a permanent separation and ultimately divorced two years later. On October 14, 1980, tragedy struck Mary Tyler Moore's life when her son, Richard, passed away at 24. His death resulted from an accidental headshot wound while he was handling a small .410 shotgun. This devastating incident was an excruciating loss for Mary Tyler Moore. Adding a profound layer of sorrow to her personal life, three and a half weeks earlier, ordinary people had been released where she played a mother who was grieving over the accidental death of her son and was subsequently got an Academy Award nomination for. Throughout her life, Mary Tyler Moore faced challenges with alcohol addiction, which heightened significantly after her son's death. However, she took a pivotal step toward recovery by admitting herself to the Betty Ford Center in 1984. One year after getting sober, she quit her three-pack-a-day cigarette habit to prioritize her health and well-being further. To move forward with her life, Mary Tyler Moore attempted to find love again. She dated notable figures like Steve Martin and Warren Beatty. She also had a relationship with a stage manager named Michael Lindsay Hogg, but it ended when she wanted exclusivity, and he did not share the same commitment. Mary Tyler Moore's love life took a significant turn when she married Robert Levine. A 29-year-old cardiologist, on November 23, 1983, having met in 1982 when Dr. Levine treated Mary's mother during a weekend house call. Remarkably, Mary and Robert remained married for 34 years until her passing in 2017. In 1995, Mary Tyler Moore's memoir, After All, was published. In the candid and deeply personal book, Mary opens up about her triumphs and challenges, offering readers a glimpse into the woman behind the beloved television characters. She shares her childhood experiences, her early years in the entertainment industry, and her personal and health struggles. One of the central themes of the memoir is her battle with diabetes, a disease she faced with resilience and determination. Moore's openness about her health struggles helped raise awareness about the illness. Mary Tyler Moore later went on to face several health challenges later in her life. In 2011, she underwent surgery to remove a meningioma, a benign brain tumor. In 2014, she started dealing with heart and kidney problems and severe vision impairment caused by complications related to diabetes. These health issues had a profound impact on her daily life and well-being. Unfortunately, Mary Tyler Moore's health continued to deteriorate, and on January 25, 2017, at the age of 80, she passed away at Greenwich Hospital in Greenwich, Connecticut. The cause of death was attributed to cardiopulmonary arrest complicated by pneumonia. In the week leading up to her passing, she had been placed on a ventilator due to her declining health, marking the final chapter in the life of a beloved actress and cultural icon. Mary Tyler Moore stood as a testament to the power of determination, authenticity, and the impact of one woman's life on many. Her laughter, tears, and unyielding spirit leave a legacy that will continue to shine for generations.